So let's take a look at the concept of the boundary layer, what it is and what it's good for. The boundary layer is an idea in film mechanics. And like any good idea, it starts in somebody's mind at some point. And the idea in this case is uh, coming in uh, the head of a German fluid dynamicist called Ludwig Prantl. And Ludwig, once upon a time, thinks uh, we're going to split the problems in halves. So every time we have a fluid flow, like for example, um, the airflow around the frisbee, we're going to split the problems in two areas. Close to the frisbee, the fluid flow is dominated by the friction, the shear of the wall on the fluid and vice versa. While relatively far away from the frisbee, maybe a few centimeters away from the frisbee, the flow is almost unaffected by shear and viscosity. It is an inviscid flow. And so Prantl said, um, we're going to split the problems in two halves. Let's study very close to the frisbee, a flow where the equations will be dominated by viscosity. And once we're done with this, we're going to study the rest of the flow in a way where we can neglect viscosity. And a lot of progress was made with this. And he came up with a name uh, for it that was called the boundary layer in German Grenzschist. And it sounds like a, a good name for indie rock band, but it is actually a concept in fluid mechanics. This is uh, Ludwig Prantl, by the way, uh, 1904, in front of his lab. Um, the very important idea to remember is that the boundary layer, it's not a very clearly defined area. It is a concept. It is a general idea, a zone. Um, you could say a cloud is a, a vague idea. If you try to cut too close uh, what the borders of a cloud is, you'll, you'll run into trouble, and the boundary layer is the same. Usually we say the boundary layer is the zone between the wall and the, the area above, the limit, where the flow has already 99% of the free stream velocity, the velocity far away over there. Um, again, it's a very blurry and it's sometimes undefinable boundary. It's a boundary that varies a lot in time and that's not so easy to measure. But this is the main, the main concept. So if you take any object, this is, a, this is a wing, a profile in a wind tunnel where the flow comes from left to right. And you go and measure uh, the velocity very close to, to the surface here. And you go down with your probe here. If your probe is in a tiny wind tunnel, it comes down. You measure, you measure the velocity in meters per second uh, until you come very close to the wall and you plot this as a graph on this lovely analog graphic XY recorder 4302, uh, then you're going to see the, the velocity is mostly constant, far away from the wall. But as you come close to zero, very close to the wall, you always tend to zero. And this zone here, where the velocity is low um, and decreases uh, from 99% of the mainstream value down to zero, the zone is called, uh, in general, the boundary layer. So if you make a graph out of this, you say this is the velocity distribution with space, this curve here, and the area where you are still 99% away from the maximum velocity, this is the boundary layer. The thickness of the boundary layer varies. It varies according to many parameters. Um, and the main idea is to keep in mind is that it decreases with increasing speed. So the faster, the faster you throw the frisbee and the shallower the layer will be, above it, where there is a lot of shear. Uh, and conversely, the slower you fly and the thicker it is, viscosity has the opposite effect. Yeah. So to represent this, a uh, very slow flow has a thick boundary layer. Um, a very fast flow or a very low viscosity flow will have a thin uh, boundary layer over here. And we learn to quantify this uh, later on. But this is, this is the main concept to remember. Boundary layer, layer always starts laminar. If you throw a frisbee like this with very smooth body, it will start laminar. And then as you go down towards um, downstream over the flow, then the, the uh, boundary layer will transit. Um, and tr by transit, we mean it will, it's going to become turbulent. So from laminar to turbulent. Um, and this point is called the transition point. And we also attempt to measure and to predict where the transition will happen. And after it's transited, it's becoming turbulent. And being turbulent, it's very messy. Uh, lots of uh, dissipation, lots of variation in speed. Um, it grows faster, um, and it's also thicker over it. You may have, this is important to remember, that you may have a laminar boundary layer inside a turbulent main flow. And you may have a turbulent boundary layer inside a laminar main flow. 
so that the flow inside the boundary layer and the flow outside are connected, but they, they may have different characteristics. Now, let me give you examples. Uh, this is an airplane, this is an Airbus 319. It's the run of the mill standard medium range airplane you will fly into uh, these days. Um, this will fly in very laminar flow, uh, so far away from the, from the wings and the, and the fuselage as the flow is affected by the airplane, all this flow is laminar. Uh, but if you come close to the fuselage and you look at the boundary layer inside the fuselage, uh, the boundary layer regime is completely, very deeply turbulent. So you'll have a very turbulent boundary layer inside the laminar main flow. Okay? The opposite is true. If you have, say, a very turbulent flow, this is uh, the wake behind the boat uh, generated by the propellers. If you now would take a canoe, for example, and you would um, pass across this very turbulent flow, uh, the boundary layer on the walls of the canoe uh, would be laminar inside a very turbulent main flow. Yeah? So those two regimes are, are quite different. And now, most importantly, why do we study uh, the boundary layer? Well, it, we study it because it, it, it makes sense for the engineer. It, it, is, it is a lot of time saving. Yeah? So, yes, you should definitely invest time into studying this very small half millimeter area because it dictates a lot of other things inside the flow. The main first reason why we study it is that we never saw the full Navier-Stokes equation. Now, we're kind of lazy as engineers. Uh, still, since we don't have the, the general answer, mathematical answer to those equations, uh, we, we get away with it. So we, we inside the, the boundary layer, we model the velocity distribution. So if you run a computational fluid dynamics simulation, a CFD simulation, the boundary layer will never be completely resolved and you will just model it. Uh, and outside of it, you may um, neglect viscous effects. Yeah? So we kind of split the problems in two halves and in each half, we have the non-complete uh, Navier-Stokes equation. It's very useful. So if you're looking at the flow, let's say around an airfoil, uh, with here flow coming from left to right, uh, you may split the zone in three. Uh, one is the main zone outside of it, where you can apply equations where viscosity plays a very small role. It's very non-dissipative. Um, you have the boundary layer here, which is represented in orange. It will start laminar, and then it will transit, and it will become turbulent. Uh, and inside those, we have models and special equations that um, focus on describing this boundary layer, the friction in there. And then you have the turbulent wake here, for which there's no good general model, and for which you have to resort to experiments or relatively complex fluid dynamics simulations. So the idea is this. The boundary layer is kind of an area which allows you to split the problems and separate the problems and reduce your computational time. Uh, so this is the deal. Uh, we never solve the full Navier-Stokes equation. Yay, cool. The second reason why we study boundary layer is that we can quantify shear forces. So if you want to calculate how much friction there is on this frisbee, you want to predict this, then you need to figure out what the boundary layer characteristics on the top of this frisbee are. Okay. Uh, so good boundary layer solution is a quantification of the wall friction. And the last thing we would like to do is we predict separation. And separation is when the boundary layer um, follows your object and then tends to separate and leave uh, the path of the object, if you want. And this is usually, in free mechanics, pretty nasty. Sometimes we look for that, but most of the time we try to prevent this. Um, and understanding the boundary layer, um, controlling it, is the key to making sure the fluid flow will follow the trajectory of your object. So, for example, what you don't want to have on an airplane is a foil uh, like this, the, the wing of the airplane, with the flow not following the trajectory and, and, and separating from there. This is here, this would be the separation point. What you would like to have is the flow sticking to the airplane. And controlling and understanding how the boundary layer works will allow you to do that. So, how to measure your boundary layer? Like a three, three, four, three step guide. Um, there are three parameters, typically, in which, with which we measure the, the thickness of the boundary layer. The first is the actual thickness, is what I call delta. Uh, this is what I described at the start of the, of the video here. Delta is uh, y, the, the distance away from the wall, at which the velocity is 99% of the main velocity. Okay, so far so good. This is easily understandable. And of course, for them, it's just find this too easy to understand. 
and invent new ways to measure thickness. Another alternate to this is the delta star. It is a displacement thickness. And the displacement thickness is the distance by which the flow is pushed away from the wall because of the presence of the boundary layer. And it's calculated using this equation, but let's now focus on this right now. Let me show you what I mean by the displacement thickness. Imagine you have a wall, you have a flat plate, let's say. And on this flat plate, you have a boundary layer building up. Um, we said delta, the thickness, the thickness of the boundary layer at this point is the distance away from the wall at which you have the velocity, which is 99% of the main velocity. This is delta, and delta will change with distance. So if you do the same experiment here, you will have a slower thickness, and if you do the same experiment there, you have a higher thickness. The thickness keeps increasing forever. And so if you draw all of those uh, points here as a line, you get this, this limit here, this, this, this area here. This area is the thickness of the boundary layer. This is quite a misleading diagram uh, because it kind of suggests that there is some kind of stuff, some kind of extra coat on top of the body uh, around which the fluid is going to flow. And this is not the case. The boundary layer is transparent. It, it is traversed by streamlines. And so a fluid particle that comes in here um, will be entering the boundary layer uh, the border of the boundary layer here, and it will it will go through the boundary layer with ever decreasing velocity as it goes through here. Um, and doing so, it is also pushed slightly away from the wall. The amount by which it's pushed away from the wall uh, is called delta star. And this is the displacement thickness. So if you take this streamline here, it was at this point here, and now you are at this point there, it has been pushed up by some amount. This amount here is called delta star, the displacement thickness. And like the main thickness, the, displace, the displacement thickness will grow with time, will grow with, away with distance. Um, we have calculated uh, the displacement thickness in a previous chapters, uh, back when we were interested in integral analysis and analysis of existing flows. And we said we, we know the velocity at the start and we look at the velocity at the outlet. And doing so, we had derived this equation. We had written this equation for delta star. Uh, so if you're wondering where this comes from, uh, go back to the previous chapters. Um, and the analysis of existing flows will, will guide you to find this equation and figure, figure out this equation. But again, don't learn it by heart. It's not, it's not the main focus of, of the chapter. The third thickness is the momentum thickness. Uh, and it's written delta star star, or it's also sometimes written theta. But I prefer delta star star because um, then you get to say delta star star or delta double star all the time, which is so cool. And this is the thickness of the fluid that you would need to remove away from the main flow so that you get the same amount of drag as the boundary layer is exerting. <laughs> Uh, it's written with this equation here, which again, you can go back to the previous chapters and figure out because we've done this in, a, in an exercise, in a solved exercise uh, in previous chapters. But perhaps let me show you what I, what I mean by this. So we have the thickness here, delta, uh, and you have the displacement thickness, delta star over here. What is the momentum thickness, delta star star? Well, you could put it this way. At this point here, uh, the thickness is delta the thickness delta star is the thickness in the main flow that possesses the same amount of mass flow as the mass flow that is missing inside the boundary layer. Um, this is how we calculate it. And the momentum thickness delta star star is the amount of thickness inside the flow that possesses the same amount of momentum as this area here inside the boundary layer. So it's basically quantifying how much momentum has been removed from the boundary layer, sorry, has been removed from the main flow through the boundary layer. And it quantifies this as a thickness away, so as a distance away from the wall. Yeah. So quite an abstract notion. But it turns out uh, these two parameters, even though they are more difficult to grasp and less easy to visualize, uh, they are much more useful in quantifying the behavior of the, of the boundary layer. Uh, especially the ratio of those two well, is a good predictor of how well the boundary layer sticks or not to surfaces. Uh, so this is the reason why fluid dynamicists always argue about which delta is the best. Delta, delta star, or delta star star. <laughs>
And the last thing we're interested in, uh, we want to quantify when we play with boundary layers is the shear, tau. And the shear is, is easy now, since we spent quite a lot of time before playing with shear in the previous chapter. Shear is the derivative with respect to space, with respect to distance away from the wall of the fluid-wise velocity. Um, and this is an expression, this is an, and it's a function of x. So it depends on the distance, so the shear exerted by the boundary layer at the start of the flow here uh, is much higher than the shear exerted by the boundary layer further down. It decreases with distance, away with distance. Um, and as usual, in flow mechanics, we like to non-dimensionalize things, and in particular the shear, and so we coefficientize it. So we say um, tau wall divided by one half of rho times the main fluid velocity is going to be called the coefficient, the shear coefficient, cfx. And it's also a function of x. So as we, as we study the boundary layer and we look into the main characteristics and the main parameters of the boundary layer, this is what we're going to try to quantify. Um, how much friction is exerted by the boundary layer on top of the, of the surface. So this is it. This is your, your first uh, short guided tour about the boundary layer in fluid mechanics.